Even if we don't know about fashion, most of us know about Gucci. This brand is one of the biggest names in the fashion industry. Did you know that Gucci o Gucci, the founder of the company, started at the age of 40 in 1921? After 101 years of its existence, now its valuation is approximately 18.1 billion US dollars. What did Gucci o Gucci do to make his company so big? Keep watching to find the answers. The Beginning it was Saturday, March 26, 1881, when a boy was born in the Tuscan leather-making family of Florence, Italy. This boy was Gucci o Gucci, who was about to bring revolution to the world's fashion industry. As a teenager, Guccio grew up helping his father make leather bags, but he didn't want to take up his father's traditional leather-making business. The young lad wanted to do something different, and it was the urge of Guccio to do something different that took him to different parts of the world. He began to travel to great cities of Europe, such as London and Paris, and in search of a suitable job. But that was not easy. Guccio had to take up different kinds of jobs, such as a waiter, a dishwasher, or even a concierge. In 1899, as an 18-year-old teenager, he started working as a lift attendant in the prestigious Savoy Hotel of London. The luxurious hotel has many wealthy patrons. Gucci observed their style and elegance, but most importantly, their bags. Growing up in a family of leather makers, Gucci knew the patience and craftsmanship required to produce a good leather bag. Here in the Savoy Hotel, he decided that someday he would go back to his hometown and also make beautiful leather products. While working in the hotel, a beautiful 24-year-old dressmaker's daughter, Aida Calvelli, stole the heart of 20-year-old Guccio. The love between them blossomed with time, and after a few months of dating, the couple got married in 1901. And he also decided to adopt Hugo Calvelli as a stepson. He was the son of Ida Calvelli from her former relationship. After leaving his life in London, life for Gucci followed its usual course for another 20 years. And he had four children, three sons and a daughter during that time who will take over his company. It was after these 20 years, his life took a sharp turn when Gucci decided to come back to his hometown. By now, he had a pretty good idea of what he wanted to do. Following his father's footsteps, with a plan to provide quality products at a fair price, he set foot in the leather industry and started his first store in 1921 in Florence. The Rise The first Gucci store opened in Florence in 1921, and it is from here that Gucci o Gucci and his company's legendary history began. At the starting phase, the products were mostly for horsemen such as saddles, leather bags, and other accessories. But in 1932, Gucci created the first loafers with the gilded snaffle, which was not a success. After three years in 1935, Gucci tried alternative versions to make bags from imported leather and other materials as a result of a League of Nations embargo against Italy. And this idea was a success, and from there, Gucci o Gucci made the first successful suitcases. For years, Gucci's business thrived. During that time, they kept working on new ideas. This was the thing that made them different products from their competitors. After years of successful business, Gucci expanded his business to a second location in Rome in 1938 at the proposal of his son, Aldo. Aldo had plans for expansion because the company was getting famous and he knew if they expanded at more locations, they would be able to capture more market share. From this point onwards, Guccio's one-man operation became a family business. And during the 50s, Gucci was continuously opening new shops throughout the country. In the year 1953, Guccio Gucci opened the first Gucci store overseas. It was opened at the Savoy Plaza Hotel in New York City as a tribute to his time as a porter. Guccio died 14 days after opening the first overseas store. During his final days, Guccio Gucci was living in Rusper, England. Now all the business was handled by his sons. In the years following Gucci's death, the brand continued to see success thanks to his sons. In 1953, Aldo, the oldest of the sons, took control of the business. Aldo internationalized the brand. He knew that people didn't necessarily want to travel to Italy to buy their products, preferring instead to purchase them in New York, Paris, Tokyo, or London. Looking at this opportunity, he made plans to expand the business all over the world. This kind of rapid expansion would sink some companies, but Gucci thrived. President John F. Kennedy referred to Aldo Gucci as the first ambassador of fashion. Gucci o boutiques began to pop up all over, and the glamorous GG symbol, which is still used today, was invented in the 1960s. Now that Gucci business was internationalized, they were continuously opening new stores around the world. Their market was booming and new products were launching. Everything was perfect. 
Until this time, all three brothers had 33.3% shares in the company. But when Aldo's brother, Vasco Gucci, died childless in 1974, Aldo and his older brother, Rodolfo, split the company 50-50. Apart from this, Aldo divided 3.3% of his estate among his three sons, leaving him with 40% while his brother retained 50%. The shared distribution was about to start a family feud. Family feud in the 80s. By the early 1980s, Guccio's grandkids also started to work at the company, and the family was feuding over who would be in charge. Paolo, Aldo's son, dreamed of starting his own fashion line. When his father and uncle refused to launch it, he went behind their backs and did it anyway. They fired him and severed all ties with him, and this step taken by his uncle and father made him furious. As a result, Paolo had his revenge by exposing his father Aldo's tax evasion, for which Aldo was sent to federal prison for years. When Rodolfo Aldo's brother died in 1983, his half stake in the company was passed to his only son, Maurizio, who joined forces with Paolo to take control of the company. However, this partnership didn't last long and the cousins turned on each other. And when Maurizio got into trouble with the authorities over tax issues, he was forced to flee to Switzerland. Paolo was once more responsible for informing the authorities. After this incident, months of court battles were fought between Paolo and Maurizio's lawyers. In the end, both cousins got what they wanted, but with disastrous results. Paolo eventually launched his fashion line, which was enormously unsuccessful. Maurizio almost destroyed the Gucci empire in his tenure at the helm through the late 80s. During this feud, the company suffered massive losses, so Maurizio decided to sell stakes of the company. InvestCorp, a holding company, purchased nearly half of Gucci shares in 1989. During that time, Gucci had a negative net worth of $17.3 million, with more than $40 million in personal debt. Under Maurizio, the company was in a bad state. Now Gucci needed a real transformation, so board members on Gucci hired Don Mello, famous designer as Gucci's executive vice president and chief designer. She reduced the number of stores from over 1,000 to 180 in a move to rebuild the brand's exclusivity. She also reduced the number of items sold by Gucci from 22,000 to 7,000 and revived the most famous brand designs from the 50s. This move turned out to be brilliant and products were starting to sell, but Don Mello wanted to make sure that she could save the company from bankruptcy. So she decided to start a clothing line for women as a result in 1990. She hired a brilliant young designer named Tom Ford to oversee the woman's ready-to-wear collection. Together, they revived many popular designs, and as a result, Gucci was back in business. Later, Tom Ford was appointed as creative director. During that time, Maurizio Gucci sold the remainder of his shares to InvestCorp, and this was the official end of the Gucci family. In October 1995, the company was publicly indexed on the New York Stock Exchange. As of 2018, Gucci operated 540 stores for 14,628 employees. The company generated 9.628 billion euros in revenue, 8.2 billion euros in 2018, and 3,947 billion euros in profits, 3.2 billion euros in 2018. Thanks for watching the video. Comment down below your favorite part and let us know. Also, press the subscribe button and bell icon for regular updates.